We are recording now. Okay, welcome to the live, you guys. Welcome to Escape Your Matrix. This is week three. I have Kristen and Travis Butler that are going to give us their words of wisdom. You guys, I chose Kristen and Travis. Let me just tell you a little bit about them. Okay, not only are they this close to the very top of the entire comp plan right now, but they have only been with us for, has it been a year now? Did you guys get, not even a year yet. It feels like months right now. Nine months. Oh my. Ten. Oh, 10. Sorry. Wow. That's, that's, yeah, almost a year. Okay. So, you guys, if you haven't got to know Kristen and Travis yet, uh, they are just incredible leaders that know all about social media. So, we wanted to invite them on here because Kristen and Travis have both built this lesson plan for us today. And I chose them because if you've ever followed them, if you don't follow them now, but um, if you've ever followed them on social media, they have a very unique and creative way of bringing in their following um, and increasing their following. And they've built their business on social media. And not only that, of course, I've seen them at events and doing all kinds of hands-on stuff too with their team. And Kristen says that travel is her love language. So one of the amazing things about you guys is that you are documenting real life. You're not just posting on social media, but you're bringing social media into your life. And so what better way to bring you guys up to tell us how you built your business on social media and also how can we help uh, the new guy, the new person that's just now getting into network marketing, maybe doesn't have a following, doesn't have a list, doesn't know what to do, what to post, or or how. Um, so we definitely want to introduce you guys right now. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to Kristen and Travis Butler. And please tell us the your current rank. Uh, and you guys are in Florida, right? That's right. Yes. Nine o'clock uh, <laughs> your time. Six o'clock my time. So go ahead and you guys... Tell us a little bit about yourself, and I'm going to go ahead and let you guys take over. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited and honored to be on. We are 500K affiliates sure. for the moment. I'm putting it out there in the universe that we will be super affiliate by, what, two weeks from now? Yeah, 31st. <laughs> yes, That'd putting that happen. out there, right? Um, we hope to give you guys some practical tips and some fundamentals that we follow to help build our business because when I started in network marketing, I had 200 Facebook friends and like 30 followers on Instagram, like nothing. And so we are able to build it up over the years and we, I would say 99% of what we do, our business comes from social media mainly Facebook and Instagram is what we do. Of course, there's lots of other platforms out there, but that's kind of our wheelhouse and what we stay in. So that's mainly kind of the tips I'm going to give you. But of course, these tips you can duplicate on any platform, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, I think the, the thing is about the quality of the people that you're working with, too. You know, you might only have 200, but if they're quality, mm -hmm. they're worth more than 2,000 or 20,000. So uh, we're going to teach you how to maximize that and kind of grow forward. That's what our goal is. I know a lot of people are just not fans of social media because they don't understand it because they think, oh, it's so drama or whatever, but it's just an accelerator. It can be an accelerator for drama or it can be an accelerator of hope. And so we hope to go out there and just give people, you know, hope for the future. Like, that's what we're here for. We're like hope brokers. That's what we say. So that's what we try to do is give a message of hope when we're out there posting and talking and try to keep the negative and all that stuff away. People have enough of that in their life. They don't need to get on and see it from us. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to teach our team to look at it like two magnets. You can either turn the magnets the right way and they'll go together. Or you can turn that one magnet the opposite direction. They're going to be polar opposites and they're going to push their stuff way apart. And the goal of social media is to expedite that hope or expedite your dream. And you can create that multiplication if you're doing it the right way. So using what Kristen and I are going to teach you should really help you do that. And the good news is I would say like 95% of what we're going to talk about is just about being a good friend. 95% yeah. about being a good friend, 5% about strategy. So 
that gives you hope hopefully if you're like oh I just don't know all the right buttons and all that trust me if you go out there and you can just be a good friend you can master social media absolutely yeah I, I totally agree with that because you know that's really what it's all about and and I think people tend to complicate it and they try to they freak out and they're like I have to post what on my Facebook like I only have my friends and family who knew me from high school and now you want me to start talking about MLM on my page um, for me I had to completely start over from scratch kind of like you guys because I had my circle of friends that knew me in real life and they were like you're not successful we know you we, you live over here in, in this dirt road like we know where you came from you know and I had to like back then I had to just kind of reinvent myself reinvent that brand so that I could step into the shoes that I wanted to fill so I'm sure you guys are going to talk a lot all about that I just wanted to that. that's so true okay so I was thinking we could start off with talking about just some basics it's setting up your profile your picture your cover photo your bio you want to make sure that it's a reflection of you. So the other day I had like 400 pending friend requests and I was like, Oh my goodness. Like, so I just quickly scrolled through them and I deleted every person who I couldn't even tell what their face was. So meaning they had a picture of their dog maybe as their profile picture or just some graphic or, you know, just a, a picture I couldn't tell what was happening. So those were the first people I just deleted right off the bat because I can't tell who they are. So think about that. Does your profile picture reflect who you are? Can I tell who you are by the picture or is it your kids and stuff like that? Like there's appropriate places to put pictures of your kids and your dogs and all of that, but mm -hmm. not as your profile picture. You want it to make sure it's good lighting and it's actually more like a headshot and less of like a full body where yeah. you can connect with the person and your cover photo, you know, you can have more fun with that and put your, you know, family and stuff like that. Maybe something that's about you more in your cover photo. But just a quick tip on that is you want to make sure that when you put your cover photo together, especially this is referring to Facebook, that it looks good on your phone and on a desktop. Because sometimes the way they format <laughs> does not work no. we had a oh, poor thing this yeah. lady had a her cover photo was the Taj Mahal and when you looked at it on a desktop it was really pretty you know nice landscape but then when you looked at it on the cell phone it literally looked like she had a cone head yeah, it was it took the, her hair off <laughs> and made the funniest it funniest yeah. thing I've ever seen and I was just like okay this is why it's very important to make sure it looks good on all platforms it's really important too because when people are looking for you, maybe it's because they met you while you're out talking mm -hmm. to people and all those things, you want them to recognize your face. So if you don't have your face on it, they might not get that stimulation because for me, I'm a lot better with like facial recognition mm -hmm. than I am remembering oh, yeah. a name. And most people are. So keep that in mind that when they're out there and they meet you out in public and you're like, oh, check me out on Facebook, you want them to be able to easily find you especially if you have a name that goes across where there's 30 or 40 people with the same name on Facebook or even Instagram, you want to make sure it's the way they can find you the easiest. And if it's your pet, they don't really know what they look like. So, <laughs> and then your description. Oh, sorry. Just to interrupt. That's so okay. good though, because, um, yeah, I do the same thing. I won't add anybody that has a strange photo. Cause I already think like we have nothing in common. I don't know. I don't can't identify with that, you know? Um, and then the other day I did exactly what you said and I got this cute picture of my dogs. I uploaded on my cover photo. It looked awesome on my phone. And then I finally logged into a computer and I was like, okay, there's like one dog face, it's <laughs> which it looks like an HD photo on my phone, but on the computer it's completely pixelated and garbage. I'm like, I got to change this. Like, yep. <laughs> so it happens to the best of us. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, totally. We only know this stuff from trial and error. For sure, for sure. <laughs> so then I like your bio just to be kind of like just some bullet points about you so people can connect and be like, okay, this is a person that I want to connect with because later we're going to talk about growing your network. So that's what people are going to look at. They're going to look at your picture and your bio and be like, is this somebody I want to connect with? And so you got to grab their attention and talk about things that, you know, you're passionate about in there. Yeah. I mean, it's a great place to even throw in like that you're in HempWorks, you know, so, mm -hmm. or my daily choice, like you want it, you can have that tagline, but you don't want it to be the very top thing because you want people to find out who you are first and then what you do. 
that's kind of the order that I typically yeah. recommend for people. And Facebook has a cool feature that has like, I'm not sure the number I have five feature photos. You can have just one or three, you know, however you want to do it. But I use the feature photos as, you know, what I talked about in my bullet points. If I talked about, you know, loving vacation and travel, then I'm going to have a picture of me on vacation as one of my feature photos. So just so it all flows together and people can get a good idea of who I am just mm -hmm. from that. That actually goes into um, with target marketing, because if you're putting whatever you're describing yourself as in your bio, which I, I, I teach the same thing, which is pick three to five things that really describe you. Um, and then only post about those things. And like you said, match it up with your, your featured photos because it, it gives you that brand congruency. That's so right. when people see it, they go, Oh, that's Jen. She's, um, you know, this, this, and this, and we know what to expect from her. We can tell what she's going to post based on what she's described herself as. If you're putting like weird stuff in your bio and then you're posting the exact opposite, people are going to get confused about what you stand for. And that's the worst thing that you can do, I think, on social media is... Yeah, you don't want to say, like, you're a hope dealer and then, like, negative Nancy, like, with your posts. Like, they're going to be like, wait a minute. Like, mm -hmm. this doesn't match. So be true to that. So, okay, should we talk about some ideas of what to post? Yeah, okay. I get that question all the time. They're like, what do I post? Do I just start talking about the opportunity right away? Um, you know, I think it's important, too, to know also who you're talking to. So one thing that we kind of do that I think kind of will give you guys like a, just a mindset is think about your Facebook or your Instagram as your reality TV show. Absolutely. So you're telling the story of you and you're going to have little commercial breaks here and there, but it's not going to be all commercials and then just a tiny bit of you. People would turn, turn that channel off in an instant. Right. We all want to fast forward through the commercials. So make sure, you know, they're, you know, it's a sponsored by <laughs> your, you know, timeline is sponsored by Hempworks or My Daily Choice. So you're going to have little things in there, but it's not going to be all of that. Mm -hmm. And most of my posts, I try to integrate, like, I don't do just a business post. Like how, people say, how many business posts versus personal posts? And I try to integrate them. So my personal life or my personality is mixed into my business posts. So they're all together and not just like some separate thing. And some of the strategies that I use, and this isn't like a science guy, so don't follow this like a formula, but I use the four P's, P's, okay? So kind of the biggest area that I try to post in is personality. So those are things that you like. So like, I like travel, That's I obvious. like Disney, I like food. I like mojitos. <laughs> like these are things that I like and people c will know that about me if they just scroll through mm -hmm. my timeline. They'll know those things yeah. because I post about them. And I like adventure. I like attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I like guns. Like, you know, I just put myself out there and I show the things that I'm passionate and have fun with. Yeah. So that should be, we're giving this a 59% <laughs> rating. I don't know. It'll make sense yeah. in a little bit. 59% why it's 59%. of your post you know, let it be about your personality, things you like. Mm -hmm. And then about 29% personal. So these are things that you love, like your family. So if I flip those and I post it mostly about my family, then people can't really connect with me on that. You know, they're just going to be like, oh, it's her kids. She loves them, you, you know? Lose the late but ability. when I have a lot of things I like, those are things that people can connect. They're like, I like to go on cruises too. I love mojitos. Like they can connect with me or I have been dying to take my family to Disney and she's always posting, you know, different foods she gets at Disney and things like that. But I mean, it could be anything. You maybe you love the idea of like wearing high designer fashion shoes mm -hmm. or purses or anything like that. And if people connect with you on that, they're going to want to basically click that like button more for you and pay more mm -hmm. attention to your, like what you're posting on your timeline. So the first P was personality. The second one was personal. And then I don't know what, what are we at? Like 8%? I don't know. Right. I'm not doing the math. You do the math. <laughs> oh, you're going to leave it for <laughs> this me, This is huh? passion. I don't, I'm not doing the math, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it made sense before. This is what 20%. you live for. So this is like your lifestyle. This is 
your adventure. You know, we can't go on an adventure every single day that's, you know, fancy, but post about that. You know, kind of an adventure that we're going on right now is we're building a house in Margaritaville. So here and there, I'm posting like progress about our house and things like that, but it doesn't have to be something expensive for it to be your passion. It can be that you're excited that Hemp Works got your nails done. There was a time in my life when I could not afford to get my nails done as much as I wanted to. <laughs> it was something that when I had them done, I felt good about myself. It lifted my spirits and it was kind of a thing that I just longed for. As little as that sounds right now, there was a point in my life not that long ago that just getting my nails done was huge. And so someone just posting that like, Hey, thanks Hemp Works for picking up the tab on getting my manicure is a huge thing. That's 10%. Okay. What's my son? Eight, ten, whatever. It's done. And then <laughs> the final P is pain. Pain. And that's only going to be like 2%, just a tiny bit. And this is about what you're overcoming or what you've overcome. You know, I can very easily get emotional. I'm getting emotional right now, so I'm dialing it down. About where we've come from and some of the struggles that we've been through. And Travis mentioned last night on a live, he just said, you know, there's somebody out there who needs this. And it just struck a nerve inside of me just because earlier that day, I just got so overwhelmed with gratitude about what this company has done for us that, you know, I have to share that. And I can't be so full of pride that I can't share where we've been because it's easy not to talk about this. I don't like to cry on Facebook. It's not pretty. And it would be so exhausting if every time I did a Facebook live, I cried, people would be like, Oh my gosh, there she goes crying again. That's why I say 2%, but it's important to, for people because they will connect with that. There's people out there struggling and they're in pain right now. And we all have different struggles that we've gone through. Yours might not be financial at all, but that's kind of something that we can connect with that we've been through too broke to even file bankruptcy. Like the lawyer wanted like $2,500 and I said, if I had $2,500, I'd pay my bills. So it's like, we've been through really tough times and I need to share that and give that little bit of hope. Like, don't give up. Don't stop fighting for your dreams because, oh my gosh, where we were a year ago and where we are now, it's insanity. It's mm. so crazy. That is awesome. And we, we love hearing your story. So if you want to share it, go for it. But um, what I wanted to add to that was the four P's. So you're talking about personality and we're not going to talk about math. I don't do math either. <laughs> yeah. Forget about the math. <laughs> I'll do English all day. Not math. Um, personality. So e everything that you said, personality, personal, passion, and pain, this all describes being 100% authentic. And I think that is super important to kind of drive home because, yeah, you're sharing your pain, but most people tend to, what, suppress their pain. They tend to hide it. And on Facebook especially, they go, look, I have this shiny life, and they're not actually living it, right? We've seen this in the industry, right, where people are renting their Lambos, taking fit photos of them, and, and then trying to sell it like that. And it's not about trying to fake it till you make it. It's about being your authentic self because I think you know, we're in the middle of this big shift where inauthenticity is just not going to work. And you guys have always been 100% authentic on Facebook. And I think that's where people can really connect with the person that they're, they're watching on their TV show, which I really like that example. I totally wrote that down. I'm taking notes as well. But, um, yeah, pain. I've, I've seen people that that's all they do is share their pain. And mm -hmm. that turns people off because it's just too much. But it's also important to share where you come from and not to forget as well. So I love that. I wrote them down. So I hope you guys wrote that down too. So four P's. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Let me give you like a little bit of practical tips for posting. So I like to post as much as possible pictures I actually took myself and not just some graphic that someone made that I thought was cute or whatever and just reshared. I try to do as many as my own photos and I don't do hair and makeup every day. So if I'm feeling really good one day, I might go take like, just do like a selfie day and change my shirt, <laughs> you know, change my surrounding a little bit. Like I live in a beautiful neighborhood, like one area has palm trees and the other one has like a lake. So I might just go around, take a bunch of pictures. And then I have a lot of cool pictures to post. 
I don't like to be authentic with no makeup on. <laughs> that is where I draw the line. <laughs> like I have to put hashtag on. all the filters. You mean? Yes. <laughs> so I, you will not see me do hashtag no filter. Like that's not me. Um, but you know, whatever. I'm not saying you have to do that. That's just what I do, and it helps me have a stock of photos, so I'm not having to rely on other stuff. And I don't post just to post. Like I don't say, oh. I haven't posted in two hours. I have to post something like have a meaning while, why you're posting. And if you don't have anything meaningful that adds value, then you don't have to post. Like sometimes, most of the time, less is more and spend that time instead of posting, go engage with people like that. You know, you have your potential list, you know, go find out how their life is going and see what's going on with them. You know, that's almost more important than posting is connecting with the people you're trying to connect with and, you know, do business with. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've signed up over the last, like, you know, two, three months. And it's been because I've went and connected with them on a level on their mm -hmm. Facebook that's brought them to pay attention to mine. And they're like, wait, uh, yeah, I remembered you started that, but you know, I hadn't seen your post in a while, but I, I just went on and clicked mm -hmm. on your, uh, your profile and I, I started seeing all this stuff. Tell me more about it. So it was just a matter of me reaching out and connecting with somebody that I was like, I really want this person in my business. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share the love. I'm going to send them some love. Yeah. I'm going to comment on some of their stuff. I'm going to like a few other posts and let them know over this week, I'm going to dedicate this week to this person. Like I pick them out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very effective and just being a good friend. Yeah. Like just finding out what's going on with them and stuff. And we're going to kind of get into messaging a little bit in a second, but you don't want to just like randomly message someone who maybe a parent just died and you're randomly messaging them about joining. So that's why it's important to know what's going on mm -hmm. in those people's lives and being a good friend. Also, what else did I want to say? Oh, this is all about attracting people to you. So not everyone is going to be attracted to us. You know, we don't have, not everybody likes the same things that you like and that's okay. Everybody's different. So that's why Jen was saying it's important to be authentic because people are going to connect with you and they're going to feel their BS meter is going to go off if you're being fake. Yeah, for sure. So don't feel like you have to be me and be like, okay, well I like vacations now too. I mean, I think everybody likes vacations, but maybe you're like, I'll like Disney now. Not everybody likes Disney or maybe I'm going to like mojitos now and post about that. Like find out what you love and what people can be attracted and connected with you on and just embody that. Anything you want to add on that? No, I think that was pretty much right on. Jen? I wrote down some notes because I, I love your guys' training and I watch your videos. I stalk you totally, but <laughs> I like what you said. Like sometimes you don't have something to say. Like for me, I write, I write down when I'm inspired. When I'm inspired about something, in fact, I'll purposefully not post. Even when I'm inspired, I'll write it down in my notes in my phone. I use the like oh. note app or whatever. And if I'm like super inspired by something, I'll craft an entire book or whatever. That's kind of my style, right? Um, about something that really m means something to me where I feel like I can connect to somebody else on. But yeah, posting just a post is not really an effective way of connecting with your audience. Mm -hmm. And also what Travis said was, um, you're not always, it's not always just about what you're posting. It's also about the other activities that you're doing on Facebook too, to build that relationship. Like he said, I go to their page, I comment on their posts, I share their stuff. And then that's how I kind of connect to them versus just, Hey, everybody come watch me. And then yep. <laughs> yeah, and you have to give to get right. So you have to, if you want attention on your Facebook, if you want to attract people on your Facebook, you have to give that love out there first. You have to be interested in what they're doing first. Right. That's the whole point of attraction. So mm -hmm. I'm going to skip well, down because I think it's just a natural flow and go back to messaging just because we're talking about it right now about posting and like what Jen said, I save posts in my phone. So if it's like, two o'clock in the afternoon, my, the person I'm trying to reach, I'm trying to reach maybe that mom who is at her nine to five. She wants to be home with her kids. She hates that she's there. She's looking for a way out. If I post at two o'clock in the afternoon, she's not going to see it. So I need to think, when is that mom going to be home to see my post? So I need to keep those things in mind about when you post and so I might write a post ahead of time and save it in my phone. Like, okay, so I can really think out my words and it's not just a rushed 
thing. And then of course make it pretty with emojis and stuff like that. I don't know the ratio or percentages off the top of my head, but people are way more attracted to a post that might have some emojis in it are more likely to open a message that starts with an emoji versus just plain text. It's in the 80% off. Yeah, it's crazy number. So like I'll make it pretty with that and just save it for the right time. Cause maybe, maybe it's going to be, you know, nine 30 at night, she's put the kids in bed and I'm like, all right, now's the time I'm going to post because I know that she's watching now and she's on her phone now. So that's a good time to post late at night is probably the best time for me that I've noticed. And everybody's in different time zones and has different lifestyles. So you have to figure out what's right for you. This is just what works for me. Trial and error. So late at night, first thing in the morning when I was still working, when I started with HempWorks, I was up at like eight o'clock in the morning. So I would post real fast in the morning. That's also a great time. Now I get to sleep in. So <laughs> I don't post early in the morning anymore because by the time I'm like up and ready to post, it's like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Well, again, my mom has already had to put her phone away and she's at work now. So 10 o'clock is not a good time for me to post to her. Yeah. Because I try to write my post to a specific person, not shouting from the rooftops like, hey, Facebook, everybody pay attention. I want to hone in on the person that I'm out there trying to help and connect with. Yeah, I think you really have to look at, too, where you are, um, because maybe you lived on the West Coast and you've moved to the East Coast or vice versa. If the group of friends that you're mostly connecting with is still in that other area, you need to think about that for your mm -hmm. post. You need to, as you're growing your network, you can start to change the times you're posting, but really think about that because for, you know, from what we found, lunchtime is a great time for us to post mm -hmm. uh, about business or if we just want something that's going to get a lot of attention or late night. Those are the two best times for us. Morning is great as well, but like maybe you have that two o'clock where moms are sitting in the car line like Kristen was talking about. Mm -hmm. Not See, a great he's time. A guy. He knows two o'clock. They're not sitting in car rider line. It's three o'clock. So yeah, I'm sitting in the car rider line and they might need something funny. <laughs> so you might That's what I was going to say. Why are you cutting me off? Sorry. Can I have my conversation? Sorry. I'll let you talk enough. So Go at ahead. two o'clock, it is a great time for something funny or something comical or something <laughs> that's going to make them laugh or giggle a little bit because they want something that they can engage with. And here is the key guys. If you can get them to engage in this post that later one at night, mm -hmm. once they've engaged with that one earlier in the day and you throw out that business one, it's going to be up mm -hmm. in their, uh, where they're going to see it. So you definitely want to have connecting posts, but if you post something at two, it's not going to get any attraction at all because people are just like, eh, it's another business one. It's going to make them not see it later. In the There's night. like a 90 minute window. Like the first 90 minutes that you post, that's your highest engagement time. After 90 minutes, it slows down for about like a five hour window. After that, unless it's just a great post, it's just getting a lot of interaction. It's pretty much dead after that. Like Facebook's yeah. not going to keep showing it in people's news feeds. So keep that in mind when you post. And also like if Travis posts and tags me in it, that counts as my post because we don't want to compete with each other. So I'm not going to post 15 minutes later and then Facebook has to decide which one of the posts it's going to show people. So, just so that's why kind I always get permission to tag her. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, is it okay if I tag you in a post? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so sorry. just know if I if you see me tag her, you know I got permission <laughs> for it first, right? Uh, also, a thing. So Facebook is awesome. They're it's so smart, and when you engage with someone and they engage with you, they make that connection, and they're like, okay, they like each other. They want to see more of each other, mm -hmm. and so just naturally in your newsfeed, you're going to see that person's post more. So that's. <laughs> it's amazing for you in this business because it's doing the work for you and it's flushing out the stuff that you don't want to see. It's a good, good thing. And Facebook doesn't like when you post things just like fake and they call it engagement bait. Yeah, so click, click bait for Facebook. <laughs> basically you post something that you're just trying to get people to comment on, but it's really, it's not okay. So if you set a post like, Hey, does anybody have great recommendations? Should I pick? Should I eat at California Grill or should I eat at um, Gico's for my anniversary dinner at Disney? Like, that's a legitimate question you might want real answers for. So people will comment on it. But if you say, hey, should I put the toilet paper on this way or should I put it 
opposite way that's the wrong way and people comment on it, Facebook knows that you're just trying to, they call it engagement bait. And they're like, nope, they're like going to sh- turn you off in people's news feeds. Uh-huh. So tr- that's why I go back, being a good friend, just put stuff out there that people want to see and brings value to your viewing audience in your reality TV show, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's really no way to beat the system on Facebook. And when I started trying to do social media back in like 2012 and I had a YouTube channel, I was trying to figure out how to beat the system. Mm-hmm. Like I had a whole video on how to add 20,000 people to a group and just like hack it, you know, all this stuff. But there's no way to beat it because they're always leveling up. They've got a department to just, like come up with new stuff. Just when you think you know, they change it. So that's why I'm like, if you don't employ strategies and you employ just being a good person, it's going to work for you. No matter what they change or what tweaks they make, you're still going to win. Right. As long as you're doing it from, you know, like you said, just building a relationship as a friend, then enough people will start to identify and understand your brand and will just follow you regardless. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's talk about messaging then. So... (laughs) Do not cold message people. That is awful. It's when you just go out there and send people a message. It's spamming people. You don't know who they are. You're just like, hey, do you want CBD oil? And I have the best quality CBD oil, blah, blah, blah. And you send a link to someone. You didn't even look at their profile. You don't know who they are. That is horrible. And it's going to instantly turn them off to what you do have. I had someone just the other day one of my girls just promoted it to 250k and like five minutes later someone sent her a cold message about hemp works and she was like did you like take two seconds to look and see who I was you would know that I'm with hemp works I was with a company before hemp works that ultimately is in a lot of trouble right now and just not doing well because of cold messaging yeah it was such a bad thing that people would literally write on their Instagram profiles no in that company i'm not going to say the name but it was awful and i don't want to see that happen here because we have such an amazing thing we don't have to do that no they'll come they'll, they will be product, drawn to yes. us because of our compensation plan and because of yes. our product and because of the ways you guys are going to start posting now that's what's going to draw them in yes. to you so cold messaging it doesn't work it just pushes people away it's flipping the magnet the opposite direction of where you want I mean, to be think about if someone sent you a message like that would you be like oh my gosh yeah tell me about it you would be like who is this person and what is going on and it just sounds it just gives people it gives network marketing a bad name when yeah. people do that so well, i want to also point this out too it comes across as desperate mm-hmm. it comes across as you're going to have to work too hard also so keep that in mind. Every single person you guys are talking to is a potential customer or an affiliate. And if you're teaching your potential affiliate that they have to go out there and work hard and be cold messaging people, which most people would feel really awkward about, yeah. they're not going to be drawn to the business because they're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to cold message people. I don't even know that person. If they have to do that to be successful, I can't do that. Yeah. So you have to kind of think about it from that standpoint that this is your potential. And what's the best way to engage with them so they're going to want to do what I do? It's to show them my life. It's to draw them in. It's to make them excited about what I do, excited about the product, excited about how I'm helping people, excited about how this is changing my life, the lifestyle I'm bringing. And how do you do that? You engage with them, not just blast them. Yeah, and you can totally message people. I'm not against messaging people, but build that relationship up a little bit first before you just like slam them with (laughs) this message. And I love to do voice memos because they can hear my excitement. They can hear my voice and I get to share, you know, whatever it is I'm talking about with them and they get to connect with me more. So I love sending voice memos. I love making it personal. Like I kind of used the example earlier, let's say, somebody just had a death in the family or their child's in the hospital or something traumatic is happening in their life. And you're just sending these messages to them that they're going to remember that because I remember a time when my brother passed away and people sent me like just messages and just, I don't know, things that happened. It stuck with me that I was like, are you even my friend? Do you even care what's happening in my life right now? So the last thing that you want to do is be a bad friend to someone who's going through something. So not every message you have with that person needs to be like, Hey, are you ready to order yet? Like I would never message anybody that 
but you can check in on them and talk to them and have some interactions with them that aren't just solely about the business. You don't want it to be a one-sided relationship where you're just trying to get something from them. Yeah, and one more point I wanted to make about that. I don't know if that's your last one or not, but <laughs> I'm not looking at your notes. I'm just, free. I'm just going at it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something inappropriate. <laughs> I caught myself. <laughs> CBD <Yeah>. brain spray. <laughs> I did not take brain spray and CBD before. <laughs> I have to. Uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's also the connection. So the friendship you're building, that person, when they do decide to sign up and be mm -hmm. a customer or an affiliate, you're going to have them for the long term. It's not a quick turnover thing if you're mm -hmm. building that relationship and it started prior to them buying or joining. The closer you're getting that relationship going beforehand, the longer term that person is going to last in your organization. So you're building that residual income by building better relationships. And if you're going to message someone, keep it like short and sweet. No one's going to read three paragraphs that you send and you just like word vomit all over them. Like just person like simple things, get the conversation going. So they have a reason to respond to you instead of you just told them everything and now you have no reason to continue the conversation. So that's kind of some tips on messaging. I'm sure Jen, you have some too. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, what I teach my people is you got to have that millionaire mindset. Even if you're not at that millionaire level yet, you have to have that mindset. Like you have got a million dollars in your pocket. We're in the bank right now. Are you going to go out and go chase sales? Mm -hmm. Probably not. You're going to invite people to come see what you're doing um, by waves of attraction or through the comments or just inviting them to just come along for your journey more than just trying to grab a sale. And then like you said, just turn over because the sale doesn't end after they sign up. Oh. the sale continues because they can quit tomorrow you know they can quit the next day and unless you're really putting your energy into you know building that relationship like you said then they're gonna think okay they just wanted me for the sale and what kind of relationship is that you know and the other thing is is we don't want to become uh, the banner ad company you know the death of the banner ad people just tune that stuff out I mean they just scroll 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 and if you're the person that's spamming on your page that's never gonna work and and when have you seen Travis or Kristen spam on their page? Never. I don't mm. spam on my page. If you look at any of the people that are in the top ranks of this company, none of them are spamming at all. That's kind of like a new, a newbie mistake to make. So if you want to get to this level where we're at right now, take this advice and take it to heart because there's no way you're going to trick your way up to the top of the company. There's, you can't spam your way up to the top of the company. You have to really just put in the effort and the time and the understanding. You have to know who you're talking to. And you can't sell anything unless you know what they want to buy. That's so right. In that conversation, your job is to get to the bottom of what they're looking for, not to how can I make my next rank, but how can I help them get to where they want to be, right? So if you have that in the back of your head when you're messaging, take the focus off of you and put it on them. That's going to give you a much longer term relationship and mm -hmm. outcome through your team. And you guys are like the king and queen of duplication. I mean, so... <laughs> that's yeah. our secret sauce yeah yep. everything we do our team can do so I have to set a good example mm -hmm. of what everybody should be doing so I don't even message people at all unless they've expressed some sort of interest on one of my posts and then of course I'm messaging them but I don't just randomly message people either not saying that you can't do that people that are you know friends with you and stuff but I just I don't need to. This product is like in such high demand that you just need to put it out there that you offer it. Like I joke around with my team, like you could literally just post like, Hey y'all, I have CBD and people <laughs> will be coming to you sure. because it's in such high demand. So you don't have to re reduce yourself to those kind of salesy tax tactics. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. What was the last thing? I need to get my notes down here. Oh, growing your network. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning, I had 200 Facebook friends, 30 Instagram followers. I think I just used Instagram for filters because, you know, I hashtag all the filters. Mm -hmm. I didn't even use it as a business at all. And now I think I have like 13,000 friends and followers between the two platforms together. And it just took time. I've been building this for almost six years now. And I, you know, there's one thing that you do know, you need to like 
have some turnover, right? Like sometimes you need to unfriend people and get drama and negativity people. Like if it's something, if there's somebody out there and I see their posts and I'm like, I never want to do business with this person. Then I'm like, okay, it's time to let them go so I can make room for new people because you do max out with 5,000 friends on Facebook. And I just start looking for people that I ha like would want to like, either we have like common likes or something. So one thing that I do to find people to connect with is I get into Facebook groups that are like-minded with me. So I have a cute little Boston Terrier. Her name's Piper. So I'm in Boston Terrier groups because that's something that I can connect with other people on. And so I don't just friend all those people. No, that's not being a good friend. So when I just comes up that we can, you know, connect on, you know, a conversation or whatever, then it makes sense for me to send that person a friend request because we just had a conversation and it doesn't seem weird because people can mark you as spam, by the way, if you're just randomly adding a lot of people and they're like, I don't know who this person is. If too many people mark you as spam, you won't be able to send friend requests anymore. And that's definitely something you want to avoid that. Yeah. because you do want to grow. So obviously I'm in travel groups, things like that. Basically take your bullet point list in your bio, your feature photos and find groups that pertain to that. You know, so if you have, maybe you're an autism mom, you should be in an autism group. You know, I'm not going to be in an autism group because that doesn't pertain to me. So just figure out what it is, where you connect with people and then again, don't be a salesy, spammy person and just friend everybody. Look for those authentic connections first. That goes into those 69% we were talking about earlier. You know, yeah. that one thing that the P, the first P that she talked about. Personality. The personality one. It's important because that's where your connection level is. And if you're posting in that, you know, seven out of 10 posts are in that direction, those people that you've made friendships will be liking it because they're in the same exact mindset, the same direction as you. So that comes back into play there. I also like to make when I meet someone in person. So maybe I connect with my server at a restaurant and I'm like, I have got to have this girl on my team. Like I love her personality. She's perfect. I hand her my card. Then I'm like, let's connect on Facebook. Then you can kind of see what I do, all of that. So I get her to send me a friend request or I send her one right then and there. And cause I know you know, I'm not going to see her every day, but she's going to see me every day if we're Facebook friends. And then I know that I'm just planting seeds until she's ready to join. Cause not everyone is 99% of people aren't going to join the first time they see it or their first exposure. It needs to be a repetition thing that they see over and over again before they're finally ready. I've had people watch me for years and then message me and say, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm tired of watching you. Like, especially if I have people say, I've seen you do this twice now. I'm not missing the boat this time. I'm in, let's do this. Let's go. So it's a long game. It's not a sprint. It will be a marathon to adding people. Same thing in events. When I meet a lot of people, if I have good potentials, I try to connect with them on Facebook and Instagram so they can be seeing my stuff all the time. I try to get anything back to social media because that is how we're going to stay connected. Anything else you have about growing your network no I do exactly the same thing as you because that's what you taught me <laughs> oh, I, I love what you said you're kind of like a talent scout when you go out right that's when I'm right. in my car I have people that I don't know like we have a lot I don't know we have like random people in Vegas <laughs> who come up to you and talk to you I don't know this happened to me recently some guy he was asking for money of course and I said I'll do you one better I'll give you my business card and I'll teach you how to make money and I'm just looking for, if you're brave enough to ask me for money, then you're brave enough to ask other people to join your team, right? That's right, so yeah. I'm just going to teach you how to do it instead. So you're kind of on the, on the hunt. You know, who do I want to work with? Who do I want to connect with? You said this girl has an amazing personality, you're a waitress or whatever. So I want to add her to the team. And what you're basically describing is target marketing. It's mm -hmm. not all about trying to connect with the wrong people it's all about trying to connect with people that are naturally just like you and if you're a negative person you can make money in network marketing if you just connect with lots of other negative people if you're a positive person you can make lots of money just connecting with lots of positive people and there's a very big difference between individuals and if your five top categories that you have on your bio is 
I like dogs, mojitos, travel, and I, I'm a network marketer. Then all you have to do is just go find people that meet those things as well because then you know you have something in common. And I tell people like, you don't need everybody to join your team. You need like 10 to 13 really, really good people that you can drive your business through. Josh recruited something, well, he didn't recruit himself, but he had about, I don't know, 60,000 member team in Africa. He worked with 13 of them. Mm -hmm. And he didn't call everybody in the team, but he worked with just his, his disciples or whatever you want to call it. And, <laughs> I love it. You know, you're just looking for people that like you can make that connection with. So I really, really like that you guys brought that up for sure. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents on it. <laughs> love it. Yeah, you can't really work with much more than 10 people at a time and actually give them defined time and still grow yeah. your business. So those are important things because I think a lot of times people get into management mode and they're just like, oh, I'm just going to post about the product, the product, the product. And they forget that they still consistently need to be growing their business and, and posting regularly about joining the yeah. business with them. Yeah, exactly. I can never stop talking about this because I know how much it's changed my life. And how can I just be like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm just going to manage the people I got now. Like, I know there's somebody out there just like me waiting for this opportunity and they just haven't heard about it yet. So I want to be the one that tells her, Hey, you don't have to suffer anymore. You can pay your bills and have extra money. You can go get your nails done. You can go to Disney. You can go on a cruise. Like you can buy a mojito every time you're in a restaurant and not have to get water like all of those things, I want to be the one that tells that person that. So I'm just naturally passionate about it because how much it's done for me and not just me, I can see it all throughout my team. And that is so rewarding. Like, how could you want to keep that in? Like, it's insane. Yeah. And one thing I want to point out too, because I know there's going to be this question that comes up is this is all done through our personal Facebooks mm -hmm. and our personal Instagrams. It's not that we're building a business page because I know a lot of you out there are sitting there thinking like, well, I tried to start a business page and I didn't get any responses and guys, business pages, they're not going to work unless you're going to throw a lot of money at them because that's the way Facebook has it set up. You do not get engagement mm -hmm. through a business page the way you would a personal page. So, and you also remember, remember you need to be duplicatable and you can't just throw a bunch of money at it because then your team can't follow your lead because they're going to want to copy what you do. So if you want to have that true multiplication factor, you need to do it the way that your team and everybody else is available to have the same opportunity. If not, you're going to not grow because you're going to cap their ability. Love it. Perfect. And I'm just like you, Kristen. I feel like it's my duty to share this opportunity with people. When I tried HempWorks the first time, before it was even HempWorks, before it was even called HempWorks, it was just CBD oil in a bottle. And Josh is like, you're always sick, try it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll try it, but it's not gonna work. <laughs> and I tried it and it worked. And I'm like, holy crap, my entire life has changed just from taking this product. And I already knew the NBC comp plant was fire. So, you know, of course I feel like I have to tell everybody this. And, and, and in the beginning of HempWorks, I was just, trying to get the product out to as many people as I could because I knew that if it worked for me, it could work for them. And I tried to tell people like, you can change your life. You can have all these things that you said that you wanted. You don't have to sabotage yourself into staying in the cycle that you're in. You don't have to accept your reality as it currently is. You don't have to just be a teacher. You don't just have to be, you know, whatever you think you are now, you can be whatever you want to be. And we have that vehicle. We have the path to, to get to really where you want to be. So I totally feel obligated and it's actually really awkward now because we just go out. What do you do for a living? Uh, <laughs> I'm in the cannabis industry. They're like, Oh, you must be killing it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Very much. <laughs> right. yeah uh, the advertising's already done for us. You just have to be that their contact. You have to be that person, their cheerleader, their, their person that's going to help champion their success. And when you have that mindset, anywhere on social media, it comes through. I mean, your, your genuine personality shines through on your Facebook page. We can tell if you're having a good day, a bad day, we can tell how you're feeling on Facebook. And, and maybe that's something we should talk about too, because I know Travis posted today, let's talk about, he's like, I'm going to train later on social media. Let's talk about etiquette for a second. Uh, like there is etiquette on Facebook as in, especially as a network marketer. If you are a person that's responsible for leading somebody somewhere when you're in network marketing you become a leader and 
-hmm. there is etiquette with not just the conversation that you have, but the stuff that you're posting, you know, you have to kind of keep yourself accountable. I'm guilty of posting random stuff that people don't like sometimes. And I give, we all are, <laughs> we all do it. I kind of think uh -huh. that, but it, <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of distractions on Facebook. And I feel like sometimes when you join network marketing and you say, I'm going to build this all on Facebook, people get distracted um, and they don't re really know where to spend their time. So can you tell us how you guys stay focused being on a, a Facebook business? How do you stay focused and how do you get to work when there's so many distractions everywhere? It's so easy to get trapped and just like scrolling. Like I'll have people that are just like, I've been working my business and I go look and I'm like, okay, well, did you post? Did you message anybody? Are you doing anything? And all I did was scroll Facebook. And that can be just a total time waster. And you'll look down and an hour has gone and you didn't do anything productive. You didn't do any income producing activities in that hour. So one thing that we like to do is we call them power hours where you're just even just power half hours, even if you only have, you know, 15, 30 minutes, even you can get so much work done on social media because it's an accelerator. You can do so much so fast and get things done. We try to be really consistent and we get ourselves in a flow because when you are, you know, working from home or your own boss, no one's telling you to get to work. You have to be self-motivated yourself. And so I kind of go in a flow that I know, Hey, this night I'm going to make sure I do Facebook lives. We didn't even talk about that, but Facebook lives are huge. If you want to get out there and reach people, you got to get over your fear of being on camera and just do it. Even if you have to broadcast just to yourself, like you can set it to only me. So really no one's watching, but at least you can practice the buttons and doing it all. Do you get comfortable? I used to hate the way I looked when I did it. So now I just don't look at myself. I just kind of look off to the side and don't, cause I'm like, why is my mouth moving that way? Like, that's weird. Like just weird stuff. Like we'll pick ourselves apart. You just got to get over yourself. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> like I said that totally wrong. I didn't mean to say it like that. Who cares? Like you don't have to be perfect. You want to be real in yourself. So get out there and do Facebook lives. That's my biggest tip. That does not take a lot of time and you're going to get maximum exposure and engagement with that. Set aside a few minutes to engage with people because I'm sure you have some sort of list. We're not going to go into huge on Facebook list, but yeah, just even if on a piece of paper, the people that you are maybe talking to are just your dream team that you want on your business. Check in with them, see what they're doing, engage with them. Do your thoughtful post. You know, I try to at least post once a day, but I usually don't ever post more than like three times in a day. If I'm at Disney and I really want to show something cool, maybe I'm at food and wine festival and there's all this amazing stuff I want to post. I'll post those in my Facebook story. So those can go in there and it doesn't mess up, you know, interacting You're with each other. Yeah. yeah. I think that the Facebook stories are great too. And it's also great for the lives, like she was saying, because at the top of that phone, you're going to see that little round thing and it's going to go red. So people are going to know that you're live and it gives them an opportunity to click on that to see what's going on. But I want to get back to something Jenna was talking about a minute ago about like kind of the etiquette of Facebook and hijacking posts. Not cool, guys. Don't do that. So if you're a leader or one of you people in your downline post something about like being successful or this product's so amazing and then you comment something negative under it you're hurting their algorithm, but you're also distracting and pushing people away from you. Like the whole point of this is to draw people together and be magnetic. So if Jenna posts something and you're like, comment something negative under it, you're just hurting your like, own Like I self. wish I could just make one sale. Like somebody yeah. will say that. Because then somebody that's on your Facebook saw you comment <laughs> there and they're like, well, this person can't even make a sale. I was going to join them, but I don't know if they can't even make a sale. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, don't be that person that does that. Don't hijack posts, you know, be positive, be uplifting, comment on people that you know are like doing well and be like, that's so great. That's so amazing. I'm working my way there. Like you want to put it out there and speak that into reality. You know, I believe that there is power in what you Absolutely. believe and what you speak. And if you're saying the negative side of it, you're going to draw that to yourself as well. You Even know, that's a universal, that's it. a universal law guys. Yeah. It really is. Um, that's just that like, you said, don't be that person. But if you have those people, cause there's always haters. So what do you suggest right. people do when haters attack them? Cause let's, let's say if you have your original Facebook and you still have Joe from high school, he's going to be a natural hater. Cause he's jealous that he didn't 
take the steps you took for his life, right? So That's you get right. natural people that just kind of creep in. What do you suggest when, when they come to you? It depends on the situation, but like I had someone comment on my post like two days ago, something similar to like, I haven't made any money and I've been doing this since May. So I went to her profile and just scrolled. I scrolled back at least a month's worth of time and didn't see anything about hemp works anywhere. And I was like, hmm, that's funny because, I, you know, I didn't see anything. I just went to your timeline. And so I might just call them out like that. If it's somebody really nasty and negative, I will block them in two seconds. I don't care if it's my mom. If she's spewing hate on my, on my life, then I got to block that out because I got to be in my happy place and I got to be making sure that my mind is attracting what I want and not focused on negative bad energy from what I don't want. Absolutely. You have a and question I, that's uh, for Travis. What do you mean hijack your own post? Okay. So basically when you post something about the business or a product and not that somebody copies it to use it in your downline, like say for instance, you post a really good post it's getting a lot of attraction. Now I always recommend you can take those words, kind of make them your own because you want it to be you that's coming out to your people. Not that that's completely cool for you guys to do that. You can do that all you want. We want you to be successful, steal our post, make them your own, use them. This is just when you comment something negative underneath of it. So let's say for instance, somebody posts their paycheck and they're like, so excited about this and you post the income disclaimer under it. Make sure you are doing that too. It's stay yeah. compliant guys. And then somebody down there is just like, well, I can't get one customer or one affiliate. I just wish I could do that. That kind of negativity is not acceptable. That's like definitely etiquette. You don't do that. Yeah. Like you want to stay positive. You want to have that mindset and you don't want, why are you trying to distract other people's potentials from wanting to buy from that person? Like it's just not, it's kind of against what we do as network marketers. Like we want people to see us that we are locking arms together, that we're going to work together. And the whole idea in that is we want to raise and elevate other people. So they're not just another sword in the battle that they're going to stand beside us as a leader. And if you are knocking each other down, you aren't becoming a leader. So yeah. it goes a lot deeper than just the insult of the comment. If someone writes that, I'm probably not going to help them very much. But if they message me and say, Hey, I really want to make this work. Is there any kind of tips or strategies that I can do to make this work? I'm going to help that person. Right. So it's like, you can have the same mission, but it's all about your attitude and definitely don't try to run on my, one of my posts that I'm trying to attract somebody in that you need help. <laughs> like do that privately and I will help you. And we're in the personal development industry. So naturally we're supposed to be positive online. And well, and it's right. going to show if you comment on somebody else's posts, it's going to show in your friend's timeline that you commented on something. And so that person you might have been trying to get into your business, saw you comment, you can't right. get anything. They're going to think twice about joining you in that business. So yeah. And if you're having a bad day on social media, don't, don't log into Facebook if you're having a bad day. That's like right. Have, or hangry. Don't yeah, get on Facebook when you're hangry. Yeah. <laughs> and away, like don't log in that day. Like just wait till you're back in the right. Like gee, I have a rule. If I'm hangry or tired, I put my phone down because right. I will say something I don't. That's I will right. regret later. <laughs> well, and I think that kind of goes into another point that I wanted to make real quick. Um, and going back to what Jenna was asking about what we don't do. Um, the last one is you can be an advocate for whatever you're going for, or you can be a millionaire. Like write that down. That's super important. Like, I think it's great that we're advocates for marijuana because it's our business. But like, if you're out there putting a bunch of other negative things and you're attacking other people, like stay at home moms, for instance, this is one I see a lot that I think is a big mistake networkers make. They're like, well, you can just stay a stay at home mom, or you can just keep your 40 hour job. I personally like to make money. Like you're attacking a group of people and you're being an advocate for network marketing. You know, you're being a net, you're being an advocate for that. That's great but you're doing it in the wrong way. Like you want to draw them in so you can be a millionaire. But if you're just, just like pushing people away uh, and it goes for a lot of different things. I see advocacy groups for all kinds of things and it is, it can be a negative thing and push people away from you. And you don't want to yeah. do that. I've definitely learned that the hard way myself. So I for sure mm -hmm. need to talk about this because I'm a very passionate person just by nature. And yeah. if I feel like I'm being attacked or if Josh is being attacked or if, my people that I care about are being attacked. Like the, you know, the claws come out. Bear comes yeah. out, don't she? <laughs> it's very hard to. It is. 
professional in spite of your own personal feelings. And it's something that everybody has to master. And it's, you know, part of my journey that I'm doing to master myself. So yeah, it's very difficult for me as well. And it's something that, you know, sometimes I'll type something completely out because it makes me feel better. And then I'll be like, okay, delete. Yeah. <laughs> and Kristen's like, I'm so proud of you because <laughs> you like started typing a message to that lady today. I was like, do not say that. Delete, delete. You know, she can screenshot that and post right. it. Well, I, just say that. There's, I mean, anything that you say can be screenshotted. So just have That's that in true. the back of your head. Um, I recently said something negative or whatever and ended up on the news. So um, you just got to be careful with what you're saying. <laughs> Take you might not have the news, but yeah, that's <laughs> it can happen. So you want to make sure you're representing yourself uh, in your in your true, you know what what you're really trying to put out there. Make sure your branding is on lock. Make sure that you're you're sending out the same message every time, and you're being consistent with that. And um, those are just pitfalls that we've all made as networkers on this journey. And that's what it is. Like it's a journey. It's it's oh yeah. Kristen said it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not going to be. Uh, a millionaire by tomorrow, but these are all the lessons that you have to learn so that you can get there someday. So, and of course, I'm going to add just the income disclaimer there. Okay, so <laughs> make sure you guys look at that. I'll post it with this if you want, but if you don't get to see anything, your results are up to you. And this is just from our experience we're giving to you guys that you can learn from us. So, Sorry. that pretty much wraps up our training. We're right at seven o'clock. So did you guys have any last words that you want to share before we wrap this up? I got one if you can go I'll first. Let me go first because yeah, I'll first. let you finish out. I okay. just want to say thank you, Josh and Dennis, so much Absolutely. for everything. I'm going to get emotional. But. I was going to say, you're going to cry again. <laughs> I can hear your voice. Oh my gosh. Like you guys have been nothing but so encouraging to the both of us and believed in us so much even when we just started and we were so saying crazy things that we were gonna do and even in the back of my mind I was like I don't know if we can do this like we're saying all this but I don't know and never my wildest dreams that I think all this would happen so fast and you guys are such giving wonderful people I could not have asked for better leaders and I'm so happy that I get to be a part of this company with you guys and anything that I can do to help grow this and make this company better, then we're totally down for that. That's right. For sure. A lot to us. You guys have succeeded so fast. I mean, in 10 months, you've completely went from literally, you know, I'm not saying zero, but you know, zero to hero <laughs> in 10 months. And, and for anyone that wants to use, I don't have an upline as an excuse. They are perfect examples because they, they signed up direct to corporate. I mean, they, didn't have a sponsor. They didn't have somebody that was just telling them everything to do. They're self-starters. They made it happen. They never came back to us with excuses ever, which I think is amazing. I mean, they had their goals. They decided they were going to do it. And if there were any moments of doubt, of course, they snapped out of it and succeeded anyway on purpose. So you guys are amazing examples that we would love to have at the forefront of our business always. So thank you for being here on your journey. Yeah. All right, I got just one thing I want to end with real quick uh, for you guys because I want to give you guys a little bit of hope in case you are out there struggling. Number one, consistency is momentum and it's free, guys. And being consistent on social media and this business are the key to being successful. It really is. If you put in the work, if you put in the time, you can find your groove. And when you find that and you keep that momentum going, you're going to get to where you want to be. But I want to, I want to go over some numbers real quick with you super quick. The first time people look at any giving ad or post on Facebook, they don't even see it. The second time, they don't even notice it. The third time, they weren't even aware it was there. The fourth time, they have a fleeting sense that they've seen something somewhere as before. The fifth time, they actually read the ad or the post. The sixth time, they thumb their nose at it. It's going to happen to you. It happens to me. The seventh time, they start to get a little bit irritated with it. The eighth time, they start to think, here's that dag-founded post again. Oh my gosh, that same product. The ninth time they start to wonder if they're missing out on something. Mine's turning guys. The 10th time they ask their friends and neighbors if they've tried it. The 11th time they wonder how this company is paying for all this and how this person is still making all this money and still doing it. And they're starting to quit their job. The 12th time they start to think 
that maybe this is a good product. The 13th time they start to feel the product has value, the 14th time they start to remember wanting the product exactly for this long of a time, the 15th time they start to yearn for it because they can't afford to buy it, mm, that's important, 16th time they accept the fact they will buy it at some point in the near future, the 17th time they make a note to buy the product, the 18th time they curse their poverty and wish they could afford it at that moment, the 19th time they count their money very carefully, and the 20th time the prospect sees the potential in the post and decides to buy the product. That's how this works, guys. Sometimes it takes 20 times, sometimes it takes more. But the idea, and this is what I want you to understand, is one post is not the beginning and the end of your business. The post is the beginning of your work day. That's what this is. That's just saying your business is open. So you just have to keep going, be consistent, because consistency is momentum, and your momentum is free. Wow. I think that is the perfect way to end this. And you are spot on, Travis. So thank you yeah. guys for hopping on, spending an hour with me on Zoom today and on Facebook. And uh, we will see all of you guys next week on Wednesday. We have Robert Hollis up next. He's going to talk to us about how to utilize the MBC tools in our system to Looking forward to that. Yeah. your success to the next level. So thank you guys for hopping on. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you.